Hi, and welcome to the Gritty Nurse Podcast, an unfiltered discussion related to health and healthcare. My name is Amy. And my name is Sarah. And we are your podcast hosts. So today we have a, a lighthearted episode related to what is it actually like to be dating or married to a healthcare professional, uh, namely a nurse. So, mm-hmm. but maybe before we jump into that, let's do our, our, our weekend update. So Sarah, what have you been up to? I have been up to the same old stuff I was up to <laughs> last weekend. So I'm still watching my Netflix series, um, Selling Sunset Season 3 came out and I went through that in probably 36 hours. Oh my and God. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure a lot of this is fake. I think it's sort of like the hills where it's like half real and half kind of made up but I still like it and um, we've been spending a lot of time outside and this upcoming week I'm doing a wine tasting in Niagara Falls which I'm super excited about cool cool with with my best gay and it'll be awesome (laughs) (laughs) all right that's really Mm -hmm. yeah Um, I guess in terms of myself like I really have like I think it's just because of COVID, there's not really not. I shouldn't say there's not much to do, but um, like same old with me, just um, taking care of my husband. No, I shouldn't say that. I Is mean, he getting a little bit better? Or yeah, like I mean, he's yeah. his incisions look like I can't believe it. He's got this crazy healing type of skin. So I looked at his incisions today, and I was like, oh my god, like you're you're not even gonna scar. And he's just like, yeah, because I'm awesome. <laughs> It's he's but, like Wolverine. Yeah, seriously, it's kind of crazy. It's like, oh my gosh, like I get, uh, and maybe it's just because of, of my skin color too, because I have darker skin. But I tend to scar much easier. Where he like never scars. He'll get like a gash across his his face, and it's like fine the next couple of days. I'm like, what the hell? That sounds exactly like my husband, and I <laughs> scar really easily too. Yeah, it must it must be a white person thing. <laughs> Damn those white people. Uh, um, <laughs> the other thing that we did that was kind of cool and really fun was we got invited over um, by another nurse to um, their place for a swim. So they have um, one of their friends has like an in-ground pool. And um, I was actually scared at first. I was like, oh, my my goodness, you know, like we have our little pool in the backyard. It It is four feet deep, but it's not it's not a big pool. And this pool was, um, I guess, in one section around four feet deep. And then the deep end was just a little bit over five feet or five, or around five feet. And my kids just like dove in. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> they were jumping in and swimming and f- flipping. And um, my friend's husband was throwing them up into the air and throwing them into the water. And I was like, damn. And they were, they were, I think this little pool has helped build up their confidence. So I'm super excited about that. and. I was just very proud of my little swimmers today. Mm-hmm. And really cool. if if I remember them correctly, they have a lot of energy to work off. So this is excellent. <laughs> I don't even know if it <laughs> did much, honestly. Oh, my God. Um, anyways, I, I really don't know how much it actually worked off because when we got home, they still weren't really, really tired, you know? I mean, they were kind mm-hmm. of like, let's play some more. I'm like, no, it's we're going to rinse the chlorine off and it's bedtime. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but that was kind of my weekend. Nothing too crazy. But let's mm-hmm. kind of get back into this whole idea of what's it like being married to a nurse or a healthcare professional? But maybe, Sarah, would you like mm-hmm. to kind of start it off? Yeah, I think this is a really interesting topic. And I would encourage any nurse that's listening to get your current partner to listen to this as well, because I think it's really just a lot of advice that we try to give our spouses or you know, significant others about what we need as nurses and why. And coming from a whole bunch of people, I think this episode will be really interesting because we're not just going to be talking about our personal experiences, but we actually pulled a lot of people on Facebook in different Facebook groups. We got hundreds of responses and we themed them into different categories. So I think it'll be interesting for people to sort of get an idea of what we as nurses want and a lot of things might resonate with you. Some things might be really funny. Some things might be shocking. I don't know. But either way, I think it's a really good episode for anyone to listen to. Absolutely. And I mean, I'm, I'm sure uh, other nurses and other healthcare professionals can uh, relate to this as well. So it'll be uh, very mm-hmm. interesting. And I think it's also interesting because I met my husband when I was in my last year of nursing school. So 
I wasn't quite a nurse yet, but I was almost done. And you, Amy, you were with your husband for like a long time before you started, right? So he kind of got to see you go through that whole process of being a nursing student to a nurse. And um, I think being a nursing student has its own separate challenges, but I still think that a lot of these will apply. Um, so one of the first themes that we got from feedback was that um, obviously you're really tired when you get home. But I think being a nurse and doing 12-hour shifts is a different kind of tired because it's not just physically tired. You're emotionally exhausted too. Right, right. And I sometimes think about working in a hospital. It's like, what other job can you have where in one shift you might be part of someone's best day of their life and the worst day of someone else's life? It's just like things are so dynamic all the time and you don't know what you're going to walk into. So just being tired. I, and I think there's jobs where you have a lot of emotional stress and there's jobs like where you have a lot of physical stress, but there aren't a lot of jobs where you have both equally all at the same time. Right, right. Like, I mean, if I kind of go back to my nursing days when I was actually a student, I think for me, I think at that period of time in my life, I probably lost the most amount of sleep even before actually becoming a nurse because I was always so like anxious because I wanted to be on the ball. I wanted to make sure I was putting my, my best foot forward. And I, and, um, even with the clinicals, like let's say it was a regular start, like a regular seven o'clock start. I was probably up like two hours before because I was just anxious. I wanted to like make sure I had I had my, all my notes ready. I was prepared. I was ready to go. And honestly, like I don't know how much more sleep I've gotten <laughs> since I've actually been a nurse. Um, but it's just exhausting, like working uh, 12 hours and being on the whole time is exhausting. Like most people, you know, um, they do their jobs, they kind of come home and then that's it for the day. I feel like most of the times I still kind of carried that with me and carried it into the next shift and it just kind of rolled into itself. So, I mean, I just remember being, especially on my rotation, which was like a day, day, night, night rotation. Mm -hmm. It took me like two, three days to bounce back. And then, then there was only like two days left till I was kind of back into that routine. So yeah always tired. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then, right. And I think the other thing that came up a lot was just our crazy work schedule. So depending on what um, unit you work on, you probably are on nights half of the time. So whether it be a couple weeks of solid nights or, you know, the day, day, night, night or whatnot, you're always working odd hours. The odds of you actually working a weekday during the week is like less than half the time. Right, right. So I think that especially when you're a new nurse, right? You don't have a lot of seniority. You probably aren't going to get all the vacation you ask for. You're going to have to work Christmas. You're going to have to work holidays. So just um, partners need to be aware of that, right? Like you're going to have to go to events alone or you're going to have to change the actual day that you celebrate Christmas or you're going to have to adjust meal times, right? For the person yeah. that is going to have to be working. And I sort of feel like the rest of the world doesn't understand shift work. Like if I'm in between my nights and I get invited to something at three o'clock, 3 p.m. and people don't understand why I can't go. It's like, well, when would I ever book something at 3 a.m. at night and ask you why you can't be there because <laughs> you're in between your days of work? Like it just doesn't go the other way. And um, I remember I had a friend that um, was getting married and she was like, oh, can't you just explain to them that it's my wedding? And I was like, every weekend is somebody's wedding or baby shower <laughs> or honeymoon. Like, it doesn't matter. You have to, like, find someone to switch with. Like, it just doesn't – it doesn't matter, right? Like, especially when you're new or you work on a small unit and there's just not that many people to switch your shifts with. You have to figure out somehow – and I used to get anxiety about it. Like, as soon as I got invited to something, I'd be, like, flipping through my schedule trying to figure out if I was working or, like, who I could switch with. And it caused me a lot of anxiety, I find. Yeah, like, I remember – specifically trying to have like my one switch buddy that I'd be like, okay, we're on opposing shifts or whatever the case may be. Or she started um, like two days after me or whatever the case may be to really have that kind of switching buddy to help. But yeah, like I remember it kind of sucks. Like the schedule is there's various different types of schedule. So I mentioned like a day, day, night, night one with five days off. Then there's something called the traditional. And then there's your twos and threes. And I mean, mm -hmm. There's actually another one. There's another one that I thought of. It's weekend workers. So I don't know if you ever had that on your unit where 
people actually sign on to work every single weekend and oh a random God. shift during the week. And a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people that did that had kids so that they could watch them during the week. But it means right, that right, you right. can never do anything on the weekend. I was just going to say the other thing that came up a lot um, from the feedback that we got was that just because your shift is supposed to end at a certain time doesn't mean you're going to be able to leave at that time because things always happen right at the last minute before you're about to leave and then you have to deal with that and you have to still give handover and that takes time as well. Yeah, that's kind of one of the suckier aspects. But I have to be honest, I was one of those people that I'd like watch the clock. And I'm like, if you're going to deliver at seven o'clock, like I'm out of here. That, But I mean, of course, that's, that's not the reality of the situation. Like you end up dealing with the delivery, and then you're like still charting, you're like, oh, someone come relieve me, save my life. And even when they do come, it's just like, you're, you're leaving and charting, and you're like not leaving till like 8, 830. So yeah, mm -hmm. there, there is that crazy aspect to um, the hours. So and on the other end, when I worked postpartum, um, we were trying to institute a cutoff of patients coming from labor and delivery. And um, our shifts used to end at 7.30. So I think we tried to institute a cutoff time of 6.45 mm -hmm. and then got pushed back, of course. And I feel like if everything was completely straightforward and, you know, no issues, then you could probably do it. But I would get so anxious if I heard that the baby needed sugar checks because that doesn't take, you know, two <laughs> minutes. Yeah. And then if the, if the sugar's low, then you have to do something about it and then to chart all of that. So... Yeah, it's, it's, it's just like you never know what's going to happen. And I think your spouse or your partner has to be understanding to the fact that you are going to be late a lot. And you might not be, but you, you don't know until you actually leave that you're going to be able to leave on time. Yeah, seriously. Like I remember I actually um, I was working probably maybe maybe only 15, 20 minutes from the hospital. But it really I find for me like if it hits past 730 and I'm still there. It's almost like dangerous for me to actually get in the car and drive back home because it's just like my brain is like, okay, you should be done working. You need to get some rest. You need to whatever. I remember one morning, like um, I'd finished my shift and I was driving home and it must have, it was like in the winter. And I remember like just closing my eyes for like one second and I was like, oh my God. So I flung my window open and I drove probably a good 10 minutes with my window down at like probably like minus 15 minus whatever it was but but like I had to like that's the way like I I had to kind of keep myself awake so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah did you ever leave anything in your pockets because I had this really ha bad habit of forgetting to bring the phone back like the phone that you would get from the unit <laughs> like or system? somebody always had the keys the narcotic keys and they would like accidentally leave without it and have to come back so there's always like the fear that you're leaving something behind or that you forgot to do something to your patient or you forgot to tell the next nurse something that was important I feel like there's that stuff that you worry about as well yeah those things happened to me a couple of times but to be honest the the main things I had in my pocket was actually just like that video that you had sent um mm -hmm. so I'd be emptying my pockets and it's like pens um, alcohol swabs, extra sets of gloves. <laughs> like it was just like <laughs> all this other stuff or, oh my gosh, tape that like, I used to have like rolls of tape in my pockets. I don't know why. I used to, well, yeah, I do know. Cause nurses love tape. That's a whole other thing, but I used to have like all these crazy things that I would empty out. And I remember actually having to go and like, throw out two pairs of scrubs because my pens burst in them after being washed <laughs> like just forgetting them in there I'm like oh my god I have to buy new scrubs I used to always forget like little packets of medication I don't mean narcotics but just things like Tylenol and Advil I would always forget them in my pockets and I always had to take them out when I was doing laundry and there was like a little pile next to my washing machine of things that had to come in my pocket first that's crazy <laughs> but now like you should be making sure that when you're doing your your med pass or you're giving your meds that you bring your mar in and your your wow machine or whatever it is and give the meds so you won't have to remember that you have your like prns in your pockets right sarah exactly you didn't hear this from us and this was also a long time ago okay a long time ago before there was electronic everything so i'm just hey, gonna man, i remember when they used to put like the meds in those little pull out drawers like everything narcotics everything were in those drawers you would just like oh here's the patient's room and um their little med drawer and you just open it, it wasn't even locked you just like pull it open and you pull their meds out so 
things have changed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> we had that up until probably five years ago, to be honest, in some areas of the hospital. Yeah. They, they, and they were never locked. No. Like no. never. <laughs> so anyways, we figured it out. We're better behaved mm-hmm. now. <laughs> yep. So the other thing that came up a lot was that you need to have a stomach of steel. So we nurses love to talk about people pooing and peeing and all kinds of other things like wound. I don't know, like the weird stuff that you smell or see. And it doesn't really matter if we're eating or not because there's not that much time to eat. Let's be honest. So it just happens to come up in conversation. And I think sometimes we forget that people that are not in the medical profession lose their appetite when we talk about things like this. (laughs) So I don't know. Did you, do you have any stories or like, did Jordan ever say that you told him things that grossed him out? I mean, I think for the most part, he enjoyed hearing my disgusting stories. I think it was more like other family members who weren't used to kind of hearing this. Because I mean, I don't think I really asked Jordan whether he wanted to hear the stories or not. I think I just was like, hey, by the way, this happened today. And 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 like, didn't even give him a minute to be like, no, don't tell me. But it's more like, you know, people who aren't used to like your candor or whatnot and telling them a story and we think it's absolutely hilarious or or fascinating and they're they're turning like sea green so i mean Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then even just the other part of the stomach of steel i don't know if this was for you but or like you ever experienced this because we never really got to sit down to eat i remember like even having food that maybe wasn't refrigerated and i would just still eat it so and I, i haven't died I so was this at the nursing station you would just eat while you were charting or what? Um, are, are you asking me to tell you the truth? <laughs> I'm asking you to share your experience without naming where you worked. So Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Every nurse has probably eaten at a desk before. It's just the way it goes. Like, I know they're like, oh, you're not supposed to. But I mean, when you literally don't have time, you warm your food up if if you can do that. And you just like scarf it down. <laughs> it's just oh, like- I'd be surprised if any nurse has never eaten at the desk because if <laughs> if you're on a small unit and there's like one person to relieve you, you're not going to be really spending your hour at the lunchroom or whatever getting your food. But um, I have a funny story though. I mean, it's not funny, but like I remember having a patient who had um, her C-section wound open up and get infected and it was so bad that she had to come back and have plastics consult and there was all this stuff happening but the wound itself smelled so bad that we actually had to get activated charcoal from some other area of the hospital and put it under her bed because I guess like people didn't (laughs) want to offend her but they also wanted to get rid of the smell so this giant I don't even know what it is giant bucket of activated charcoal that we like slid under her bed to try and get rid of the smell of it. And I'm not sure if she was aware of what it smelled like, but I remember telling this story to my husband and he's like, he put his fork down and I was like, Oh, sorry. Have I disgusted you? He's like, well, a little. <laughs> and I'm like, next time just say something. Don't let me keep telling the story until you can't eat anymore. <laughs> oh man. Just, I know this is probably going off track, but like even speaking about some of the smells that we have to deal with, like if you worked in labor and delivery, you know, at some point in in your shift, you're going to smell poo. Like Mm -hmm. invariably women shit themselves while they're giving birth. If you didn't know, you know now. And it happens, I'd say like nine times out of 10, maybe more. And, and, but it's natural, right? That those are the muscles that we want women to push with. So, but kind of going back to what I was trying to say is like, there are some things that we see and some things that we smell that I just don't think the average person would really have a true understanding of. I remember no. one patient and I mean, I, I always tell my patients if they call in, they're like, I think I'm in labor, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, you know, um, if this is your first baby, just make sure you, you know, go uh, take your time, have a shower, come in, we'll assess you. I always add in the piece the have the shower, shower part very part. important because there is nothing more abhorrent than peeling back the sheets and smelling that funky odor i don't care what anybody says 
It is <laughs> the worst. But I mean, like, we deal with some disgusting stuff. So you know what? If we have to tell our stories, I think it's catharsis, right? We tell our stories to kind of put the <laughs> weight and the load onto someone else as well. It's like, if I had to deal with this horrifying experience, so do you right now. So I mean, and honestly, we filter out so much already as nurses. We're just giving little <laughs> bits. We're just giving highlights of Absolutely. our shift. It's not even like the bulk of it, really. So I think a supportive partner should be able to listen and support and just be like, yeah, that's totally gross. I don't know how you did that. And not try to judge and not try to diminish how hard it was. Yeah, they should fully be like, oh, that was a, that must have been really hard. Here, have some chocolate. Problem solved. Oh man, some of the some of the comments we got is that nurses have husbands that massage their feet when they come home. <sighs> I'm guessing you never had that either. I've had it, but not. I don't know if it was due to me being like working a shift. I might get refreshed if my husband listens to this podcast, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't <laughs> necessarily after a shift. Because I, I, the other thing is. So yes, we deal with all these horrible smells, but I didn't know if your your um, shoes ever smelled funky. Mine kind of started getting crazy, so I had to throw them away. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, you know what? I feel like some people, when they're stressed, their sweat smells different. Like it smells worse. Right, right, right. And also being stuck in a shoe for 12 plus hours can't be healthy. Probably not. And I mean, like, I guess the best shoe to wear would be a sneaker, but... In labor and delivery, you can't – well, you could wear sneakers if you don't mind buying them every single time. Like when you get amniotic fluid splashed on them. But I mean like I don't I, I don't remember finding any particular shoe I wore very comfortable. Maybe that's just – No. I feel bad though because once I was in the locker room and something smelled really bad and it was <laughs> – I feel like it was somebody's shoes. And I made a comment about it and then I realized after that the person with the offending odor – was there and she like walked over to the shoes that I was complaining about and put them on oh no and I was like oh damn I shouldn't have said anything like why why didn't I just say something afterwards or just not say something at all well, this is a funny or just like come in with spray and spray the shoes well I don't know if you remember at this in the in the nursing um like in the nursing lounge area where people got changed they used to you know that that spray that that what they'd mm -hmm. spray in a room like if the room was all stinky there's like lots of those sprays like in like in that yeah. locker room. So they would like probably spray other people's shoes. There's baby powder in there because, you know, I guess people knew they got some stanky feet. So they just were inventive, right? So <laughs> so stomach of steel is really important. Um, the other thing that came up quite a right. bit was that when nurses come home, they just need space. And that might be like an hour to just sort of decompress and uh, unwind and do whatever it is they need to do um, and just supporting just supporting nurses mentally so something that came up with a lot was not asking what's for dinner or not asking that person to decide what's for dinner because they've been making decisions all day and they right. just want to you know not think about anything so I think that's really important um and just agree with whatever they say, even if you don't have any idea what they're talking about and you maybe don't agree, just just agree. We need that space to decompress. So some like as much as we kind of story tell and we tell our spouses and our friends and family members, like all the crazy stuff that goes on, like immediately after a shift, I don't know, this is just kind of my own feeling that I really don't feel that I, I want to sit and talk about everything or, you know, I think I think if if asked, I'll, I'll be polite enough to say, you know, this is not the time and place or I'm not feeling like that. But um, I think we just need that, like, give us that, that 45 minutes hour downtime just to kind of decompress. And then, you know, we feel like, I feel like the tank is kind of full, not full, but it's, I, I feel a little bit more refreshed, but some, but sometimes I just kind of like, I just want to come in and go upstairs and have a bath like literally that was my routine so I'd come in Jordan would say hey to me I'd be like hey and I'd come straight upstairs take everything off and just jump right into the bathtub and that was that was my way of kind of hitting the reset button I remember a couple times where I had a mini freak out so after coming home from a shift that was probably one of the busiest I've ever had I finally eat dinner you know shower get changed I climb into bed and then my husband was like can you rub cream on my back and I was like, what? 
I'm like, why do I need to rub cream on your back? I, I'm like, this is a joke, right? He's like, no. He's like, my back is really sore. Can you rub cream on it? And I think I was like, no, I'm sorry. Like, I'm done. I'm not rubbing cream on your back. But it was like the last straw. Like, it broke me. I was like, either I'm just going to like yell at you or I'm just going to shut down. And I chose to shut down. And the other thing is like, we had a friend that used to invite himself over to our apartment when we still lived in an apartment. And I remember telling my husband, I'm like, he cannot be here. He cannot be here wanting to talk about his problems with his latest girlfriend when I just finished a 12 hour shift and I can't do this. Like I can't do this. It's going to come off rude, but I'm just going to go have a shower and go to bed and you can talk to him and like, you know, whatever his problems are. But I was like, you have to tell him that he cannot be here. You can meet him somewhere else but not in our wow. house. Well, you know what? I have to be honest. You're 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 great because I would have fully said to Jordan like don't even think about it. Like it's not even an option, especially when I was working nights. Like I mean, if he had people come over, I think I would have lost my shit on him. So, I think he he knew well enough to be like, yeah, Amy needs to sleep at least her <laughs> like 7.5 or whatever she she decides to sleep and then we can decide like what's happening that day. But man, even if you would entertain, I'd be like, no way. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm great, right? Thank you. Thank you for saying I'm great. You are great. You're <laughs> awesome, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you for saying I'm great. appreciate that. <laughs> so the other thing that came up a lot was um, when you're with someone, you don't want to have to act like their mom. I don't think this is specific to nursing, but especially for nursing, we are kind of mothering our patients all day. And the last thing we want is to come home and mother our spouse. So don't whine about your man cold, make your wife coffee or your partner coffee, I should say, um, and take care of him or her. Take care of the person that's a nurse. And um, what else happened here? So seriously, a first oh date conversation goodness. should never be about your bowels. So just because someone is a nurse and you're dating them doesn't mean that you need to share all of your no, medical history like and get turn off. like a medical opinion. Like that's not totally. And the same with family, right? I think we've talked about it before that when you're a nurse in your family, everyone just comes to you with anything medical related and expects you to have the answer when you're like, I'm an obstetrical <laughs> nurse. I don't know anything about moles. So please don't show me your mole. <laughs> don't show me a picture. Don't show me in person. I'm just going to tell you to go to see your doctor anyway. So I think that you just need to be a little bit clear on what you can and can't do. Oh, absolutely. But I mean, I, I have to be honest. I do take some, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to think of the right word, but so listen, people kind of coming to me, not that um, I'm a, I'm a physician or any of that, but like, I feel like the people who, who do ask me questions genuinely care about my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I kind of try to see it that way, right? Like they're asking me because they, they value the way I think or the way I do certain things or the way I might have conversation about health matters towards them. So that is okay with me. What isn't okay is when I get like really intimate details where it's like, I think our friendship or our like relationship has just gone to the next level. I'm going to like, oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know we were there yet. But I mean, I still again feel like um, they're confiding that information to me or asking me that. And it makes me, I don't want to say it makes me feel good, but it makes me feel that um, I'm a person to be trusted. So I kind of, I don't mind it in some aspects, but I mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like when I'm talking to the person, I'm, I'm always giving my opinion as a nurse. And I would never say to them that I think this problem is stupid. But I guess in my head, I do think those things sometimes. And not to say that. <laughs> no, no. There are some things that people ask you that are pretty stupid. Like I've had people ask me things like, ridiculous and, and of course and I, to be honest i i try to answer to the best of my ability without looking like i'm like what did you just ask me do the best that we can yeah and i'm happy if i get questions about pregnancy or labor and delivery or breastfeeding or taking care of a newborn like those are things that i know about and i'm glad to help people right i feel like you know i feel really valued too when people come to me so i don't want to say that i i wouldn't want to answer questions but it's like when people know what you do, but they somehow think that, oh, maybe you know so-and-so. Maybe you can ref get me into this doctor sooner because <laughs> yeah. you know someone who knows someone. 
I don't think my web is quite that far, but you know. No, I, I, and I totally hear you on that. Like I've had a couple questions where people were like, oh, can you, can you get me referred to this? Or, or, you know, maybe you can get me into the ED faster. I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't have those special powers. Like, I mean, I wish I did. Um, I might know someone that you could speak to, but I, I don't have um, these granting powers that can, you know, like get you faster into the hospital or whatever the case may be. I do mm -hmm. know the complaints department very well. So that, <laughs> that, I mean, I'm more than happy to hit them up anytime. <laughs> if you have a complaint, go to Amy. She'll fast track your. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So, okay. Other random traits about nurses. Do you find that you're kind of anal about hand-washing? Like even before the pandemic, were you anal about hand-washing at all? Because some people are really anal about that. Just being a nurse and seeing what they see in the hospital. Yeah, I, well, the thing is, I had like probably even before, well, well before I um, became a nurse, I actually had a little bit of uh, issues with OCD. So, I mean, um, in terms of hand washing, I used to wash my hands a lot anyways, until my mom was like, yeah, this is not normal. And um, I think I've minimize the amount of times that I wash my hands, but I still wash my hands a lot. And that's why one of the things with this pandemic, when people are like, oh, you know, the most important thing was, is hand hygiene. I actually said to my husband, I'm like, so maybe this is why I had OCD. I knew people were just generally nasty <laughs> and didn't <laughs> clean their hands. And that's why I had all those things to worry about because like, I, I don't know, hand, like hand hygiene solves a lot of problems, right? Like it's just kind of, scary to me that people have to be like reminded it's like by the way make sure you wash your hands I'm, as I like cringe on the inside that you know Jordan know, used right? to tell me that he's like he's like you, if you'd be surprised to know how many males go to the washroom touch their junk pee and then walk out of the bathroom I'm like Ugh! oh yeah <laughs> they horrified. have done studies they have done studies and men are way worse than women that doesn't surprise me at all. Oh, no, it's so nasty. <laughs> the other thing that I noticed that I started doing when I was a nurse is I would look at people's veins a lot. And <laughs> especially with men, I'd be like, man, that's so big. I wouldn't even need a tourniquet to get that vein right there. <laughs> or oh. like, or like, I'd just be looking at people in general and being like, I wonder if the vein is just hiding under there, but I don't see it because I don't have a tourniquet. Um, so especially like in their hands, you know, maybe I mean, that's just me. Well, I no, it was, it's not just you. And I think it, I think it stems from nursing school, right? Like when we're taught about like, you know, how to, how to initiate an IV and then we actually get out into the real world and we have to do it. It's just like, you want someone with the big fat juicy veins and that, like that flashback of blood. You're like, Oh, I got it. It's so easy. And then, you know, when you miss it, you're just like, Holy crap, I have to poke this person again. So yeah, like juicy veins are just, I don't know. They're kind of sexy too. So they are, they are. And especially like, I mean, cause I did my consolidation in labor and delivery where women are young and especially before you give birth, like your veins are pretty good. It's like after you give birth, you're all full of fluid and it's really hard to find. But I feel for people that need to start IVs routinely on the elderly because they are the hardest and like their veins are small and they collapse and they roll. And then, you know, their skin is so delicate that if you miss once, it's like, did you miss the one good vein that there was in their hand? Oh, no. Yeah. Kind of thing. <laughs> we always we always called anesthesia if we couldn't get like if nobody on the unit could restart an IV. Um we would call anesthesia as a last resort and they were always able to get it, I find. Yes, anesthesia was our saving grace. I, I'm I'm pretty sure that sometimes they were annoyed, but we're like, eh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Sorry, we need your help. Well, I mean, at some point I had no shame. I'm like, I have to give this medication stat and I can't get it. So I need help. And, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the other thing that came up was like people were saying that they would do things randomly in their sleep. Um, so one nurse said that she worked so much that she would try and take her ex-husband to the bathroom in her sleep. Oh my God. Um, I never <laughs> had that, story. but I had dreams. I still know the sound of the call bell where I used to work and I would hear that in my <laughs> sleep, but oh I never no. got to so far as to actually carry out patient care on someone while I was sleeping. That's more like sleepwalking. Well, I actually have a very interesting story related to that. So I had just come off of nights. And Jordan and I had actually moved into my parents' house because we were saving money to 
purchase our own home. And at that time we were looking after, like my parents were looking after uh, my niece and I believe she was, Oh, maybe like maybe two or three years old. And she was eating strawberries at the, the breakfast table. So I had just come in, I was sitting there looking like a zombie. So one of the things that I used to happen was Jordan would pick me up and he'd usually get me some breakfast on the way home. So I think I was eating my breakfast and she was eating the strawberries and I was zoned out. I was fully like sleep eating. And the Mm -hmm. next thing I hear is like, and I look over and my niece is choking. I, I just looked at her, grabbed her, stuck my fingers down her throat and popped the strawberry like halfway across the kitchen. Jordan sitting there looking at me like, what the fuck? just happened (laughs) and and i slowly went back to eating my breakfast and went up to bed and he are you serious to this day he was so like amy that was the freakiest thing that i've ever seen he's like you did not make a sound you didn't even look scared you just reached in popped it out finished your food and went back to sleep and i was like i don't know it's just i'm a nurse i guess that's just you know you just automatically do things so yeah that is badass amy there you go (laughs) thank you (laughs) i bet if you were sleeping you would have like gotten up gotten the strawberry out and then like dusted your shoulders off and then gone back to bed (laughs) you would have rolled back over and went to bed yeah that's funny um okay so the other thing that i have a personal pet peeve on is when i watch medical shows like Grey's Anatomy actually Grey's Anatomy is not that bad but some other medical shows where things are not done properly and it really bothers me and um the video that you were talking about I think it's this guy named Ginger Billy so he talks about this as well where it's like the medication amount isn't right or like the IV doesn't look like it's hooked up oh by the way something that really bugs me is like when there's a scene with somebody that decides to leave the hospital on their own right they just rip (laughs) the IV off they rip the IV off like it's a piece of tape and like why why is it that blood never spurts out or like something it's not like you just rip the IV out and that's <laughs> it right like you're gonna start bleeding everywhere so that kind of bothers me and CPR is never done correctly because people <laughs> are always bending their elbows and that really bothers me too because how hard is it to see how CPR is actually done yeah I like I mean you mentioned more popular shows but do you remember that show nurses <laughs> I didn't get through very much of that, and I think I, think, I might have blocked it out. <laughs> I think I watched one episode, and I was like, what the hell was that? Like, that is nothing like how nurses are. And then I was just like, you know, are they talking to nurses? Do they get their information or ideas for their scripts on, for nurses? Like, it was the most horrible show I had ever seen. Like, it was just awful even how the nurses were acting i was like oh my god this is the worst tv show i've ever seen so i mean i don't know they need to consult real people okay amy amy just right now just right now i googled this nurses show and it came up nurses show cancer (laughs) so i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure that nobody likes it it says um they canceled this show less than two months after the season one finale. So I think we are not the only ones that feel this way. Well, you know, I did send them a DM and I didn't hear anything. So now their show's canceled. I'm- <laughs> I really wanted to like it. I really, really wanted to like it. I'm not, I'm not just saying that because I really wanted a nurses that kind of, or a show that kind of portrayed nurses in what I thought was going to be a funny sort of show, but it just wasn't funny and the acting was bad and nothing seemed to make sense like it wasn't portraying any of the things that we do at least with Grey's Anatomy they use the right terminology even though they kind of they dramatize things and it's always those weird cases right but at least the acting was good and the storyline for the most part I mean I don't watch it anymore but I did watch it for a good probably five or six seasons yeah the acting was horrible There was like one scene I remember the nurse like a patient was dying or something and the nurse was like off crying in the corner of the room or crying no she was crying in front of the patients and their families i'm like that would never happen 
And it wasn't even mm-hmm. like, she, like 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 a one single tear would roll down her cheek because I could see that happening. But we wouldn't yeah. be bawling like <laughs> like it was it was horrible. I was just like, oh my god, that's that's not what would happen. And then it just makes it just makes us lose credibility. Like maybe someone would watch that show and be like, that's how nurses really are. And it's like, oh god. It's I know we're not that thing. dramatic. I mean, <laughs> you're human, right? So you probably would be crying like quietly, but you're not going to throw yourself down on the floor because you're supposed to be there to support them, not the other way around. Absolutely. I'm glad it's canceled. Goodbye. <laughs> and how how do you feel about full moons? I know how everybody in labor and delivery f- feels about the full moon, but um, this ginger Billy guy talked about how his wife circles the full moon on the calendar because <laughs> it causes the crazy to come out in people. Yeah, I mean, I think we've heard this. This was probably one of the first things that I was told about the full moons and never saying the Q word. So I believe in all those things. Maybe I'm crazy, but full moons and the Q word will mess up your night right quick. (laughs) Well, now I don't think about the full moon anymore, but I used to because that would put all women into labor. And then two or three days later, then the postpartum unit would be chock full and we'd be (laughs) dealing with like, oh my God, what do we do? We can't, we can't discharge anybody. And there's like, more women backed up in labor and delivery. So I totally believe there's some sort of scientific evidence for this. I don't have the research in front of me, but I'm pretty sure there's something out there. Or yes, there should the be. crazies come out during a full moon. I, I believe it. It's not just werewolves. Some other, some other random stuff that um, someone wrote was um, her husband is an accountant. And it took him a while to realize that a line of numbers off an Excel spreadsheet can't compare to looking for a patient's heel. Like, that had fallen off in their boot because they were a diabetic and they had um, gangrene. Oh my so you're God. like, <laughs> you take the person's foot out of the boot and you realize part of it's missing. And then you're like literally digging around for it, using a flashlight to find this missing part of the foot. God have mercy. That's the worst. <laughs> I don't know if that's worse than seeing gra- gangrenous testicles. Oh, <laughs> I think you mentioned this before. Didn't you look something up and send it to me? I don't I don't know if I sent some I don't know, but I remember it was during one of my clinical placements. So this patient had like uncontrolled diabetes, probably similar to this other situation. And I had to do a, a dressing and I was like, okay. No, it wasn't a dressing. I think I had to just irrigate the area. And I remember like pulling back and like moving removing the dressing he had on. And, and, and this was something that turned my stomach. And I know I have a very strong stomach, but when you could see the patient's vas deferens, so that's like, and the epididymis, I was just like, no, I can't handle this. And I was just like, that's why I can't be a medical surgical nurse. I was like, nope. Right. And I would look at wounds like that when I was in nursing school and be like, how does this go from looking like this to healing? I mean, the process might must take months if not years i just don't i just couldn't see the progression like i'm sure it does get better eventually but how long is that going to take right long enough for me to say that is not the job i wanted to have <laughs> amen <laughs> so i feel like we kind of went through a lot of different um tips that nurses have come up with for their partners and um Amy, did you have anything else you wanted to add? No, not really. Like, I, I see one more comment here that I think is kind of funny um, from, I guess, one of the uh, posts that you had where someone had mentioned that everyone says they want a dirty nurse, but until they realize that we're really dirty, like, literally shit on our shoes. Yeah, seriously. Like, I think people think that, and maybe even our spouses, I don't know if it's ever happened to you, where it's like, hey, can you play the sexy nurse? No, never, ever. I will never, (laughs) ever do that. I will never dress up in like a slutty nurse costume. And I mean, the nurse that you're going to see is the one that has their hair up in a ponytail that's all super messy, bags under her eyes, stains on our scrubs, and shoes that we don't want to bring inside of our own home because we know how nasty they actually are. So I totally can completely agree with that last comment where... People think they want a dirty nurse, but like, no, you you, you really don't. <laughs> no, you really, really don't. And, you know, we have a full bladder and an empty stomach and we're sweaty by the end of the shift. It's just not pretty. Yeah. It's not pretty at all. No, I, that, I think that's all I kind of wanted to say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, 
Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you like the Gritty Nurse podcast, please leave us a review, rate, subscribe, let your friends know. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. You can also follow us along on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Thank you.